Canada. I'm Fadwa Gindi, anthropologist. So uh, let's start our session. It's called Failure, Obstacles, and Unresolved Problems. But it's not really all about the negative failures. We're going to uh, raise some questions and perhaps introduce some ideas. These are the questions that were suggested by the Academy. What have been the most serious failures of global governance and the reasons for them? Um, and apparent failures and unresolved problems that obstruct the future development of the global community. Um, possible factors that come to mind is unilateral unchallenged dominance in the world, uh, defiance of United Nations and global institutions so that they are really disempowered and they can't function the way the human global system uh, thought it would, it would work. Challenge of nations' sovereignty, things like destabilizing regimes, regime change, nation building, all of this is causing a lot of problems. And we come to the tail end of them, uh, refugees. Refugees are caused in large part by many of them. Uh, unilateral defiance of existing global trade and nuclear agreements, proxy wars, corporate capitalism always immoral has become savage, trafficking of arms, sex, human organs, drugs. There is a world lawlessness today. I think it was talked about a lot. Human rights sometimes with, which are intended to protect the rights of people is sometimes weaponized to punish nation states. Uh, monetary aid is also weaponized to subdue nations to the demands of dominant nations. Um, do checks and balances really work? I mean, we experienced problems in the United States with the checks and balances where there's uh, corruption at every level, but it still works. That when, when somebody like um, Trump comes in as a businessman, who treats the United States as his corporation, a business corporation, uh, suddenly he discovers that there's a legal system, there's justice, and uh, some of his proposals will be <laughs> stopped. Uh, it's a discovery, wow, checks and balances. So the idea of checks and balances is good, we have to work on it. Can we establish checks and balances at the global level? Uh, that would be a solution to global governance. We would have some kind of global institutions, but what about establishing checks and balances that themselves are checked and balanced all the time? Uh, and maybe there is an absence of a worldview, a worldview that comes out of the culture uh, that projects stability and balance and the elements to achievement. I'll give you an example. 7,000 years ago, um, Egypt put the north and the south together and tried to build uh, a, a nation state, a state. Um, and uh, it was relatively successful at doing it. And it achieved a lot. Uh, they had the worldview that told them uh, Maat is the goddess of stability. So stability became a value that is important. If we don't have stability, we have isfet, which is chaos, evil, violence, injustice. And these come out of ancient Egyptian uh, values, and it's a, a holistic model that is there, and the people all share it. If you look at Mat, the goddess, and you go to the top, you find a feather, and in her, uh, what to me, in the right arm is the ankh. Uh, the feather represents morality, justice, and truth. Okay, so justice is connected with morality and truth. And then the ankh uh, symbol that she's holding in her hand is life. It's the symbol of life. And it's, uh, it's about harmony in life nature, culture, gender, cosmos, you see all the animals are integrated 
in their lives, in their world. They are goddess, uh, gods and goddesses. Even the beetle is a goddess. The cat is a goddess. And, uh, but it's not really um, uh, estranged, but integrated in a harmonious balance. So it has to do with gender and fertility and so on. Then if you look at the other arm, uh, Matt is holding the scepter, which stands for governance. In other words, it's the totality there that makes the building of a state that works. I'm not suggesting that we adopt 7,000-year-old models, but it gives us ideas about um, these unilateral uh, one element idea or the polarities. Um, and a long time ago, some people uh, decided how the world works with harmony and balance. So, uh, you know, that was just a brief introduction here. Um, so by ancient Egyptian <coughs> standards, if they are here now and they look at the world, they will consider it chaos compared to their notion of stability. There's no uh, map. There's disorder instead of order. There's a lot of instability. There's no balance. There's no harmony between the spheres, gender, cosmology, earth, space, animal, world, time, which was integrated before. Today we have a lot of dissatisfaction. I think it came through when refugees go from country to country, although humans have been walking ever since they started bipedal motion. They moved out of Africa and they kept walking and they never stopped. And um, so people have been moving. If the climate is bad in one place, they move to another. If they have uh, violence in the area, if the food shortage, uh, climate change, all of these things were always there uh, millions and millions of years ago. And people just keep moving. But I think the character of moving now is different. And it's caused by different reasons. And yet we come to the end part of it. We have refugees. What are we going to do? Either send the army at the border for the caravan, or you know, we have entire government discussing refugees. Why are you discussing refugees? <laughs> Discuss the wars that brought them to your country in the first place. And the wars are motivated by capital and money, and uh, uh, armed trafficking, which is becoming hysterical. I mean, you do proxy war so that you send old weapons that you have in some country to dump it on another country. It's all for money. Get the checks from Saudi Arabia, get the checks. There's no sense that it's affecting our world in a bad way. And then we come and discuss refugees. No, discuss the wars and see if we really can uh, put a stop to that. And is it really about profit? And if it is, we have to remove that element. Uh, and then another point I'd like to make is people are not robots. I, I hear always things like we have to change their perception. We have to change them. We have to change who? People are not robots. So um, as I'm saying, this, uh, it's evolution that gave human species the unique capacity to do all of that, to think, and to create technology. They created technology because they need technology, and they use it quite well, actually, particularly the young people. And um, it is not about seeking food and defense. We're beyond that. But sometimes you think that people are, uh, there is devolution where humans are going back to just seeking uh, food and defense and profit, as opposed to uh, focusing on uh, quality of life. Um, beyond that, uh, nature has done its share for human beings. Now human beings have this capacity, and they have to move forward and um, create uh, lives that are livable for everybody and for the future of the young people. So questions, what have been the most the serious failures of global governors and the reason for them, I can only suggest, I don't know more than anybody else, 
Uh, I think that thinking in polarities may be a problem, an alternative may be better, the national versus the global. Why can't we have both? In fact, we are having both, but we keep discussing a global governance, but there are, national governance is already affected by globalization. We are talking about the globalization which is a process, not necessarily a government, but a process. The effect is that everybody is using the same internet, everybody is using banks, everybody is using... So, uh, not everybody. There are uh, local communities who are not using that. The socialist versus the capitalist. It becomes hysterical in some places as between the Republicans and Democrats. It's used. It's not that there's ignorance. It's, it's uh, exploited. And uh, why can't we have both? Why can't we have some capitalist things, investments and uh, free market, as well as some socialist pro programs that would help the local communities that are deprived? Some subsidy from the government, some subsidy from uh, one of these global uh, governance institutions that we are going to institute after this meeting. And instead of getting profit from uh, selling weapons that are defunct or use uh, depleted uranium on human beings and kill brains like Iraq that started civilization, I think we can do better than that. Um, and then leaving out local communities, even groups like ours, we talk about nations. We don't go really below that. There are local communities still today not not people studied by anthropologists only, but they are there in the Amazon, uh, Bosnia, Herzegovina, there are groups of women trying to improve their natural environment and save the rivers, and they are saving the rivers from what? They are saving the rivers from corporations that will make profit in a corrupt way that will divert these rivers, which is their livelihood, their families, and they really don't want more than that. They want to grow their own food, and they want to give happiness to their families and reproduce in a quality of life environment, and what's wrong with that? So we want to um, care about these local communities, but we also have to identify them. I think anthropologists can help with that identifying the very local communities that still live in a traditional way and cherish it and we can learn from them how to be nice to the environment and the environment gives back when they maintain that river they drink very good water um, the apparent failures and unresolved problems that obstruct the future development of the global community I think the imbalance of power, there are very dominant nations, it is becoming irrational. Dominating the world, if you don't do this, I don't, this. if you, you can kill if you want, but I want your check and I'll protect you. And you know imbalance in access to resources. Um, you can't hog it all, we all have to live in the community, we have to share but then the sharing also has to be, uh, I think, um, broken down into the elements, share what and how. Uh, the imbalance is built into corporate uh, capitalism, which I said before, and the best word for it now is savage. I just see that profit is, uh, you get bad food because of profit, you get animals eating animals, and things that just for profit. So how can we improve the quality of life and go back to the people? There's corruption, abuse, exploitation, uh, world trafficking. And um, what I sense in general is that all those who are very uh, connected to the global world uh, have a lot of discontent, but the discontent is at the level of the people. I think the corporations are quite happy. The uh, people and the youth. The youth uh, discontent, I think we heard some examples today. They uh, just say, well, they messed it up and we're not going to be the victims of that. We'll just do our own thing. And they use Facebook. Uh, now they moved away from Facebook. They are leaving that to us. They said, we're leaving to the old people Facebook. Could they move to something else? 
but they are uh, empowered, they get information, they are using it, they are boycotting certain products through uh, the internet, so it's not a waste of time. I mean, I really um, resisted going on Facebook, but it was the only way to connect to Egypt and the Egyptians. They use Facebook a lot, so I said, I'll try it. Uh, sometimes you just have to um, um, tolerate things like, happy birthday, it's your birthday, and everybody checks 300 people, happy birthday, happy birthday. But if they need to do that, that's good. I don't have to sit and watch it, but uh, if I, I watch it for data. Um, so it's good. If, they're getting, if they are getting personal with each other, maybe they are trying to pull back some of the quality of life that much of the world is taking away from them now. And that's adults, not, uh, not young people. Uh, I think that's all I have to say. <laughs>